Hello fellow YouTubers, my name is Dan Theas, and this is my first ever YouTube video. Um, I figured that I might just start with something that means a lot to me, that's actually changed my life. And I think I'm going to discuss my conversion story, um, from atheist all the way to becoming a Catholic. And there's a lot in between, so let me begin by starting the, uh, the conversion story. Um, I was an atheist first uh, from 1993 to 2000. Um, I woke up one day and figured, hey, there has to be something else other than this life and then dirt. So I went from being an atheist to agnostic. Um, from being an agnostic, I uh, started searching for the truth and I went to a lot of places, researched a lot, and um, couldn't find any answers, so I decided I'm going to go where all the crazy people went, I want to go to church. So um, I started going to this quaint little church called Atlantic Baptist Church in Margate, Florida, still there, I think it's even the same pastor, Pastor Bob, um, and I went to, I was going there debating the pastors and so forth, and long story short, the pastors, I looked in, you're not going to find any answers. Um, just you know, because we're going to debate all the time, just start showing up and you'll eventually find what you're looking for. So I agreed. And one week um, in July, we went to a retreat in Panama City, Florida. Panama Beach? Panama City? Something like that. Florida, called the Wild Week. And, the, and there I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I had a miraculous conversion. Very different than most people. That would be a different story for another time. Um... And when I became a Christian, accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I became a five-point Calvinist, um, which is essentially is predestination. Um, you can you will never lose your salvation. Uh, tulip, which is basically total depravity, unconditional election, uh, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. We'll get into that later. Um, I, I was a Calvinist for. Th three, four years, four years, really, and um, in 2005, I went to a school called Potter's Hill Ranch. At Potter's Hill Ranch, we studied the Bible intensely. Um, essentially, it was like going through Bible college uh, in three months. It was a boot camp training missionaries for insane, like, life-threatening missionary traveling and so forth. So, uh, you can, <laughs> that'll be another story. Uh, there's a lot of stories I had to get into. Um, there I started reading the scriptures and realized that the Bible also taught that um, you can lose your salvation, um, that it isn't uh, um, guaranteed, it isn't one saved, always say there's things that can happen where you can fall away and so forth. So I went from being five-point Calvinist to an Arminianist, which essentially is the opposite of Calvinism. We believe in free will, or we, they believe in free will, um, they also, um, are a little different than, than Calvinists. They don't believe in total depravity. They believe that we can choose to accept Christ. Um, Calvinists believe that in a, people, in a room full of ten people, God essentially says half of you are going to heaven, half of you are going to hell. It doesn't matter what you do, you're going there. Anyway, um, our minionists believe that we have free will and choice. God died for everybody, and everybody has the opportunity to be saved. Um, and not everybody's going to heaven, but those who accept Christ as their Lord and Savior will be um, saved. Uh, our Calvinists don't really believe that. Um, I went from being our, I went from being Calvinist Arminius, Arminius for four years, another four years. Um, and then I realized that there was too much scripture supporting predestination and the election and so forth. So I realized, just as God is fully God and man, or Jesus is fully God and man, um, two things in one, that the Bible also teaches predestination and free will. Um, so that's essentially what Calvary Chapel believes. So I went from being Arminius to um, believing both are true at the exact same time, which con uh, coincidentally it's the same thing Catholics believe. They believe in free will, and they also believe in the election, pre the, those that are pre predestined. Um, so, 
that isn't why I became Catholic. I started going to seminary at Regent University in the spring of 2009. In the spring of 2009, I declared my major at getting my master's in church doctrine and history, obviously, at the study of the fathers of the faith, the patristic fathers. So I started reading the patristic fathers, and I came across something very interesting. The Apostle John had a disciple named um, Ignatius of Antioch. Um, and St. Ignatius wrote um, a letter to the Sumerians. And in this letter, this caught my eye. He said, Consider how contrary to the mind of God are the heterodox in regard to the grace of God which has come to us. They have no regard for charity, none for the widow, the orphan, the oppressed, none for the man in prison, the hungry, or the thirsty. They abstain from the Eucharist and from from prayer, because they do not admit that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Savior Jesus Christ, the flesh which suffered for our sins, and which the Father in his graciousness raised from the dead. That was written uh, between the year 80 to 110. Um, so, that caught my eye. What, what is the Eucharist? And what do you mean the flesh of Christ? Um, and I started realizing that not only did Ignatius believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, um, so did many other church fathers. And I asked myself, why would the Apostle John teach a false doctrine to his disciple, Ignatius? Um, after thinking about it, logically, the Apostle John wouldn't teach his disciple a false teaching. Oh, it's a false teaching to Protestants. That's what I thought it was. So I did more research and, and studied uh, the Church Fathers. Even went all the way to Luther. And Luther believed in the real presence. Uh, um, Luther had this to say, which actually caught me um, completely off guard. I thought it, that that was, it wouldn't be possible. Luther said this. Um... Who but the devil has granted such license of resting the words of the Holy Scripture? Who ever read the Scriptures, that my body is the same as the sign of my body, or that it is the same as it signifies? What language in the world ever spoke so? It is only then the devil that imposes upon us these fanatical men. Not one of the fathers of the church, though so numerous, ever spoke of the sacramentarians. Not one of them ever said, it is only bread and wine or the body and blood of Christ is not there present. Surely, it is not credible nor possible, since they often speak and repeat their sentiments, that they should never, if they thought so, not so much once say or let slip these words, it is bread only, or the body of Christ is not there, especially it being of great importance, that men should not be deceived, certainly, in so many fathers, and in so many writings, the negative might at least be found in one of them, had they thought the body and blood of Christ were not really present. But they all, all of them are unanimous. Essentially what Luther is saying here is that of all the fa father's writings, at least one of them had to have the negative, that the real presence didn't exist. But Luther, doing much research, found that all the fathers, meaning the, the patristic fathers, the, the beginning of the church, are unanimous in the real presence of Christ. And Luther, the reformer of the Protestant faith, um, said this. So that dawned on me that the real presence is true. The Catholic Church is true. So that started a, a conversion. Um, I'm running out of time here. But essentially, if the Catholic Church was right about the Eucharist, what else were they right about? And I started researching a bunch of things and realized the Church was right about a lot of other things. And it's essentially a conversion from me being an atheist to a Catholic. And I see it more, uh, not of a conversion, but a, a path to the fullness of truth. So um, I'm running out of time, but that is my first video. Um, I appreciate any comments. Um, and yeah, I will clarify uh, some more in the future and I'll probably get in more detail since YouTube only limits me to 10 minutes so I hope you guys enjoyed and I really want to try this I think it's pretty cool hi I'm your leader say hello ah, whatever <laughs> I'm gonna make a whole video just like this it's probably gonna be a political video so bye have a good night